Welcome to Breeders Syndicate, where we explore the history of a clandestine scene through the eyes of the folks who lived it. I'm Matthew, owner of Riot Seeds. I'll occasionally be joined by my co-host Not So Dog, breeder and grower from Mendocino. Welcome to the underground. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Breeder Syndicate. I'm Matthew. This is my fellow host, Not So Dog. Good evening, everyone. We are here for another weekend of uh, fun, fact-filled journeys in uh, strain history. So tonight we were thinking about covering something that we we don't normally talk about a whole hell of a lot as far as like getting deep into the details of cookies since it's a modern line. You know, like uh, we, we try to spend our our time on older lines for the most part, a lot of the baselines. But cookies, I feel, has become uh, somewhat of a baseline now for better or for worse. Uh, what, what do you think on that? Um, I agree with you. Matt and I certainly uh, picked you know, starting um, his history a long time ago, simply because there was way less people to get pissed and complain uh, about what we were talking about. And, you know, it's it's also one of those things that um, it's probably not well known by a lot of people, you know, and there's yeah. a lot of disparate facts and little bits and pieces that you gather up. Um, and so we've been slowly working our way towards more modern stuff. And, uh, you know, cookies is obviously and like that whole family that it spawned uh is is a big part of cannabis these days uh and it's it um you know it's a lot more delicate uh because cookies is also like you know intending on being a global brand and there's a lot of business and money behind it and it's not as simple of like a clandestine story as maybe some of the older stories are um you know and but uh and all the people are still alive and around as well yeah yeah. You know, um, so there's a lot of different angles we could attack it from and we'll 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 pick some of them and go from there. I was thinking like, a, um, let's start with a, a quick discussion on the culture in 2009, roughly when cookies was starting to gain its foothold. You know, um, what kind of stuff was going on in NorCal, the Bay Area, when cookies was blowing up? It, it was a little bit during the purple craze and all that. Yeah. Or was it slightly? Um, no, I think it was later. Okay. I think it was, I, I think it was later. I mean, like for, let's put it this way for you. What would you consider the start of like, I heard about this thin mint cut. I didn't start hearing about it until 2010, right around then. Okay. So let's just, yeah. let's just say, you know, um, Obviously, like as, as, as with anything, there's people that are in the know and then it spreads slowly and then eventually it becomes more common knowledge. And then it's like a famous thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, at that time, I, I still lived uh, in the same area that I do now. I still lived in Mendocino County. So mm -hmm. the Bay is only where all this kind of begins is like only a couple of two and a half hours south of us for the most part. OK. Um, and the two things are pretty tightly related in a lot of ways. Um, there was a lot of back and forth uh, in the cannabis scenes between the Bay Area and Mendo and Humboldt, especially. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I would say, honestly, probably in the 2009, 2008, 2009, 2010 era, I would say that era for the both the Bay and Mendocino County uh was you know it was still significantly a gas era yeah uh i would say that the the diesels and the headbands and the cushions especially uh were all in high demand uh getting good pricing right yeah. and lots and lots of people were growing them and that was sort of like the the bread and butter if you were okay that's kind yeah. of like I mean, it's it's obviously there's way more to it than that is, but in terms of like what was the the big dynamic back then, um, you know, I mean, so 2008, 2009, you know, there was an enormous amount of Kush being grown in the hills by me um, that was all destined for clubs down by you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the That's LA, San, yep. you know, SoCal area. There was a big oval in California. Uh, the bay was sort of a meeting ground in the middle, um, you know, and, and stuff like that. And so, you know, the bay was sort of like the hustler area. The yeah. bay was where a lot of all the NorCal weed flowed into. Yeah. You know, 
and all that. And so a lot of the people in the Bay were hustlers, even if they were, you know, there were, you know, there was warehouses and stuff like that here or there, but like land pl places were expensive and it was the city and it wasn't as easy to be, um, you know, the way you could be say in Humboldt or Mendo or somewhere a little bit more rural. Yeah. Certainly. So who were you some know? of the the players in the early cookie scene? Do we want to go over that at all or? Well, I mean, I think, I mean, there's, you know, there's, uh, there's really well-known players. Yeah. Obviously. And then there's a few people that aren't particularly as well-known. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we could obviously step in a bunch of landmines on this one. Yeah. Um, because all these players are still active and around yeah. and I'm sure they have their own take on it, um, and their own version of it, you know? And so yeah. they'd probably also be quick to point out any kind of small discrepancies, yeah. uh, that might pop up as well to try to like discredit the whole thing or whatever. So, um, you know, because cookies is not just, it's not like talking about a lot of the other strains, uh, in cannabis cookies is like the one that formed a brand. Yeah. You know, it was brand. like, it yeah. was like the first modern cannabis brand in that regard. Yep. And, you know, and the cookie stores and fame and it happened at like, you know, we could maybe talk about like the, where, where cannabis was at when it popped up. Yeah. That's what I was talking about. The culture. Let's the do culture. It to it. So, I mean, as far as as far as my neck of the woods in Northern California, um, it was uh, the green rush was massively on in my area. 2008, 2009, 2010 were booming times for indoor light depth, full outdoor of all kinds of things all over my neck of the woods. What's the Sanford indoor North. indoor pound rate circa 2008, 2009? Uh, I mean, like for high quality, the, the prices people would have been seeing for quality OG cushion door. Like you could, you, I mean, you could get, I could get 4,200 like in my neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. Okay. For good. ins, you know, I want to um, give especially people an for, idea. especially for desirable things, you know, like, yeah. um, you know, gassy strain, certainly, uh, certainly cush. Um, you know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of game back then where people from Southern California, their entire career was like coming up to my neck of the woods, buying things at that and going down to dispensaries in the Southern part of the state and, you know, giving them to then those dispensaries for three, $400 margin, $500 yeah. margin. So that was big business. Then there was, that was full depth years. Depths were big. Then there was still droughts back then. So, yeah. you know, depths commanded good pricing. Uh, you did, you did things well. And it, it was one of those, it was definitely a gas era. I mean, not that there wasn't lots of things being grown, but there was an enormous demand for both Kush and diesels of various kinds. Yeah. So all kinds of permutations of those got grown quite a bit because they, because a lot of the, the people coming up and then, you know, if, if you wanted to leave your area, the vast majority of people that would leave Sonoma County or Mendo or Humboldt or wherever, if they wanted to go somewhere and hustle their stuff, they generally went to the Bay. Yeah. Whether that was San Francisco or the East Bay in Oakland, somewhere right around there. And the Bay was sort of like a, a collection ground for everybody from SoCal coming up, but they didn't want to go all the way up into the hills. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was people from all over in the Bay looking to get, it was sort of a clearing house for where a lot of the weed uh, from my region ended up, at least momentarily, even if it was just passing through on its way to somewhere else, yeah. like say dispensaries in San Diego or, you know, uh, or LA or anywhere like that. Right. Um, GDP so it was, was booming in the Bay during those years. If I remember correctly, the Oracle, the GDP, all of that, like a staple of that Bay area. Yeah, it was a staple. And I mean, I would also say it was starting to get by then it was starting to get phased out. Yeah. Um, in favor of, uh, Kush and, you know, I mean, Kush was getting still, um, pretty damn high prices in Southern California down that back. Yeah. Then. So if you had access to cuts, um, you know, it, it moved easily and you got a good price point, yep. you know, and that was certainly the height of uh, the the gas diesel craze, too. So yeah. there was a lot of that sloshing around. Um, Urkel and GDP and, and Grape Ape and Mendo P and all that stuff. I think that was more like 
2005, 2006, 2007. And then like the wave of gas really started to come through. So what do you, you know? think was the, was the, um, what do you think made what became cookies appealing in a time where yield was still relatively important? Maybe not the most important because OG had, had taken dominance and it wasn't like a power yielder for most people. But what do you think uh, drove the necessity for cookies all of a sudden? That, that drive and hype when there was already OG Kush and there was already, a, like you say, a waning demand for GDP and Urkel? Um, well, I, I think it was a number of factors. And I think one, one thing you can say about it is that uh, Americans are pretty tribal, right? Um, but mostly we're not tribal, like uh, we're not tribal in the way that a lot of other countries are tribal. Like we're a re weird mishmash of, of cultures. So we get tribal around like sports teams and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that like, I think pushed it was that I would say it's probably fair to say in California that LA and SoCal was considered like Cushland. Yeah. Yeah. Even I'd if it was so. produced other places like the craze, the money, the rep, all that different types of stuff, LA got it, got it. Right. Yep. And for the Bay, uh, cookies was really something that like all of a sudden was the Bay's. Okay. You know, the Bay yeah. wasn't just like a clearing ground for the Emerald Triangle. It wasn't yeah. just like a pass through. It was something they could claim as their own. Yeah, it was right? very much a bay bay set of cuts. And so just like that, like you're going to have fans of it. And we just like you have fans of like the San Francisco Giants or the Oakland A's or the Raiders, you know, or anything like that. Like that's our shit. Right. This is unique to us. And then on top of that, since it become since it sort of started there the people that were in the know and all the people that first got it were kind of from there. Yeah. Right. So humans like to feel like they're part of something special, right? Yeah, for sure. Everybody FOMO. likes to be, huh? FOMO. Well, everybody likes to feel like they're on the in crowd on some, yeah. on some aspect of things, you know, yep. and a lot of the history of a lot of the history of the, of, of that, that became, you know, and it made people famous too. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I do think that, cookies came along at a really weird time in cannabis in the sense that um, it was a sea change in my opinion, mm -hmm. right? Where probably before cookies, uh, this isn't going to make cookies sound that good, but before cookies, um, most weed was judged on its nose and effect, right? Yeah. Uh, and looks wasn't that big of a deal. Right. I mean, yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times I would have people come up to my neck of the woods and they would open up a contractor bag of sour and they would stick their head in it and look up and say, this will work. Yeah. And it was before they even really like dug around. I mean, they could still find something in it that they didn't like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but for the most part, if the nose hit them like a, a hammer in the face. Yeah. You were almost all the way there. Yeah. Right. It was super important. And cookies like you know is extremely photogenic and it came about kind of at the uh at the end of of a certain era where um you know ig started happening and these different social media platforms started happening right mm -hmm. and uh it looked gorgeous yeah right and you you can't you know anything you're looking at on instagram or anything else you can't smell it you can't smoke it you can't you, but you can see it yeah and cookies uh, and a lot of its children are extremely photogenic. They're beautiful. I, right? I know that was the first thing that truly caught my eye was, well, I'd seen stuff similar. I remember, uh, you know, there was stuff that would come out of different combos, and we'll get into that later, that I'd seen similar, but I'd never seen anything quite capture all of several traits in one bud. But I also saw the yield and thought, there's no way this is going to catch on. There's just no fucking way this is going to catch on, you know? Yeah. I mean, and I think some of it too is, you know, they, uh, they got it to some hip hop artists and they got it and, and they, and they got it wrapped about. And, you know, there's, if you get it to, if you get things to cultural trendsetters, right. Yeah. Then other people might want it. Yeah. You know, Sound and goes. there was a lot, there was a lot of well-developed clubs um, selling a lot of indoor in 2008, 2009, 2010, all that, that era. Right. 
There yeah. was a bunch of Bay Area clubs. Um, and back then, if you had an active medical card that checked out, you could go make a deal with a club. Yep. You didn't have to have, like today, you didn't have to have a bunch of permits and a bunch of special rules and regulations. You literally had a doctor's note and you set up an account and you were allowed to, I mean, that was kind of the way 215 worked. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It was, you were allowed to supply dispensaries. Right? Yeah. And so there, and you know, and what people ended up calling top shelf ended up being indoor. Yeah. You know, not always. There was a lot of light debt back then that made top shelf and stuff like that. But I think, you know, when you're buying something at a store, something that looks really attractive is a big seller. Yeah. And it was different. Right. It was very yeah. different. Um, the way cookies looks, the way it's buds form, uh, they're very dense. They're very tight. Um, they look really pretty. Uh, the way that it has a tendency to color up really like accents the THC. You can see the crystal. Um, mm -hmm. It has a lot of visible crystal. Yeah. You know, um, and it did kind of have like a, an off cookie dough type of sweet aroma. And I think it's the first line that like modern marketing really mattered with. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. You were for... posting something up there for a minute, but I, I couldn't see what it was. No, I was just getting it ready. It's it's a it's the video where they first explain the genetics behind cookies and whatnot. So whenever we're ready to get into that part, I'm going to toss that up so we can hear it from some of the first videos ever posted by them. Uh, the cookie crew. <clears throat> so maybe I'll throw in something like this a little bit too, where, um, I, uh, Matt and I did a, a Thanksgiving show on sour because we figured if you're, you know, fighting on Thanksgiving with family is pretty traditional. So if we talk about something that gets people riled up, That'll work. Um, mm -hmm. And cookies is also probably going to rile people up. And there's a bunch of big players that are involved in cookies and they all have their versions and stories and whatnot. And so, you know, take this as sort of like general tidbits rather than some like completely chronological, you know, attempt to lay out the history. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, because, you know, the history with cookies, like I said, it's not just about the weed anymore. It's about different people's careers. Yep. Now. Yep. You know, and lots of about... careers were set up by different stories. Lots of stories are conflicting. Um, I've heard all kinds of stories from beginning to end. But what, like I've, I've said in many of our shows before, I've learned a lot of times you can, if you grow enough progeny, enough plants, enough seeds of a certain line, the plants will tell you exactly what they are. If you have enough experience and know enough about the baselines, the plants will tell you exactly what they are. And that's what I've always been more interested in when it comes to cookies, not the people behind it, not the players behind it, but what it actually is and what we're seeing when it breeds, you know, that's where I always run to. So that's where, that's where I'm mostly going to focus my portion of uh, uh, stuff is when I talk about like the, the breeding traits and how I see them breed and whatnot, but we can cover some of that historical aspect. Um, yeah. So do you want me just to fire up the video now or do you want to cover anything else in the beginning precursor? To no, I think the beginning part, I think like if we're talking about like setting the stage for what happened. Yeah. Uh, we probably, you know, it's probably it, it's there was a bunch of there was a 215 was probably it was probably the height of 215. Yeah. The height, you of know, 215. Is, is really when it came out, the height of 215 era. There was a lot of explosion of cannabis going on. There was a lot of new growers coming into the scene. There was a lot of younger people getting involved. It had spread to the point and become chill enough to the point, even though you could totally get busted on any number of different levels, that mm -hmm. all kinds of people were jumping into it that hadn't wanted to before. Yeah. It, business was booming. Dispensaries and, were booming. Everything was booming. And if, if I remember correctly, like the first cut I had heard of was Cherry Pie out of all those, of that group. I mean, they had... As, you know, F1 Durb and a few other things that were in their circle. But the first one that I heard about before cookies or any of that was the cherry pie. And that was that was what I was most familiar with uh, online before the cookies kind of exploded. And it had a similar look, but it was more OG looking to me than the the nug structure of the cookies. Was that something you guys saw up there? Uh, do you remember a certain date of it popping up or any of that? Yeah, I mean, I... Um... You know, I'll, I'm going to I'll dance around certain aspects of it just because yeah. of the 
of what we're at. But I can say that there are some people that were intimately involved in cookies that I have gone way back with. Right. Yeah. And I knew, um, uh, you know, years and years and years before this stuff came about. So there was certain things that I saw um, before cookies became famous. I mean, one of the one of the guys uh, that's involved, um, for instance, um, he gave me the flow rider yeah. in I want to say 2004 spring mm -hmm. 2004 or something like that. Um, and so that was the first actual, like living in Northern California, I was a little bit uh, behind the Kush wave um, in terms of like access to cuts that were specifically Kush. Mm -hmm. um, but that was the first one that I used to, that I used to, um, uh, I used to rock, you yeah. know? And so that was, that was four or five years before cookies even popped up. Yeah. Right. And it just so happens because that same crew had that cut, that, that Kush cut is the, is the cushion cookie. Yeah. Right. That's the claim. So yes. that's so, and I, I, I just believe it just because of who it came from yeah. and who had access to it and all that different types of stuff. I don't have any, I, there's a lot of stuff that with cookie, that's a little mysterious. That one I think is pretty standard. Yeah. You know, now what, what cut, what cut exactly flow rider is, you know, is it, is it a, a, a cut of OG masquerading under a different name? Is it a different cut from Florida? All that type of stuff. That that's a debate, I suppose. I got a question. Um, huh. When you when you got it, did they call it Flow Rider? Did they call it Florida OG? Did they call it Flow Rider? Or did how did that happen? Where did that uh, name well, get put on it? To be perfectly honest, um, I uh, it, you know I got it as I got it as OG Kush. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then. You know, I got interested in Kush and I'd heard a bunch of different things and I went back to him and I asked him, so I hear there's a couple different ones. Which one is it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, he, he said it was, I mean, the, I'll, I'll probably mangle this pronunciation, but I never heard the word Florida OG. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, although it was a play on that. I, you know, it was, it was it, a flow rider. Yeah. Almost, almost like how, a uh, a, a, you know. Uh, somebody with an accent would say Florida. Yeah. I love your right? Southern accent, by the way. That's good. It's terrible. You know, <laughs> but anyway, um, supposedly, and I don't know if this is true or not. Supposedly it was, it was, it was sent from Jacksonville, Florida to the Bay. Yeah. You know? Um, and at the time I thought my buddy was like all generous uh, for giving it to me. But what I realized way later was that, um, he was going to, he was giving me the same price he was giving me for diesels and other things, mm -hmm. you know, which was low fours. And then he was taking it to LA and like making mad loot off it. Yeah. Um, so I didn't get it like on a, some, you know, I, it, it, but that, that, that's the first one. It's still one of the best OGs I know of, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, the OG and cookies is a, is a really nice cut. So that was kind of my first, that was kind of my first, uh, as far as things that were in cookie that I mm -hmm. personally possessed um, yeah. flow that, that, that Kush cut is probably the first one. Yeah. You know? And I think what happened is uh, in a nutshell, um, we can bounce around and there's a lot of depth to all this, but almost like the, mm -hmm. like the diesel story, I think there was, there was multiple accidental pollinations. Yeah. That, you know, this, this hermed onto this, we grew up seeds. This thing got named this. We, you know, we played around with it a couple, a year and a half later, this herms onto this, you know, so on and so forth. And then, you know, um, yeah, we have, sort of have, we have some pretty good video of, well, yeah, um, pop it up. They, of them. Well, it, it, certain ones come in certain sections, but basically of them, um, making it very clear that it was probably herm accidents. Cause they say they have no interest in breeding at all so but what let's pop up the first one this is uh this is i believe jiga and burner and uh, uh powers up kenny kenny powers they call him no not the guy with the mullet much different guy uh and they are discussing in a club i believe the original video was called big burner's bigger business episode one um and yeah this is them discussing it so let's pop it up here One sec. One sec. I forgot. I have to remove stuff in order to even watch this. This is stupid. Uh, there we go.
Oh, okay. Matt. Okay. Yeah. So that was We're a total here. failure. What? Uh, what was? I couldn't hear anything, and in the comments, nobody else oh, could hear no. anything either. Well, that's too bad. So that entire time was a moment of silence, uh, or a long you? moment of silence, while Matt encouraged that's technical true. difficulties. We saw the video. Uh, huh. I saw Kenny Powers. I saw I saw a crew, but there was zero audio, as far as I could tell. Well, that is freaking weird, huh? Yeah, so well, it, it was a like it was that. a silent film version, as somebody would say. Not so okay. loud, no, not so sound. Break it down, Jacob. Bro. Let them know what, so, what, do they, what do they want to know? I mean, first I mean, of all, I see some YouTube blogs where they said Cookie's got cherry pie. Is that true? To clear that up? No. I'm just saying, there's a lot of shit to clear up. So let them know. break it down, baby. Preach. What do they want to know? I mean, I mean, let's let them know what Cookies is first of all. There's a lot of like weed magazines and. And like all kinds of crazy shit that are just putting false. The relationship yeah. between cherry pie and cookies directly is it's like I would say more of a like a brother and a sister relationship. They have the same parents. One of the same parent. One of the half of the parent is uh, the F1 Durbin crossed with a uh, um. boom. So that you can even hear any of that. Now you're muted. Not so. Hold on. I don't know. Your mic's muted. Oh, well. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have a bunch of technical difficulties, I suppose. Mm. So why don't mm. we just explain? Why don't you just explain? In, Did you not uh, hear that who's... video at all? I could hear it slightly. It's still playing. It shouldn't be playing still. What do you mean it's still playing? It's not playing, is it? Yep. You can hear it. I can hear it. That is really weird. It shouldn't be playing. F1 still. and Durban Poison. I just heard. Yeah, they're talking. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I can hear it. I don't know if other people can hear it. I yeah, I have no clue. I can't even remove it from anything. It's just there. It's probably going to play on loop to here. Let me delete it real quick. Is it still going? I can still hear it. Yeah. That's weird because now it's deleted from the whole thing. So it shouldn't be playing. Let's see. As long as it, they can't hear it. Okay. They can't hear it. So that's all that matters. That's really weird. Do, you, that is really have, weird. Now it's gone. Do you have audio playing somewhere else on your tablet turned up so you can no, hear? No, I feed? guarantee it's all through my phone, bro. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah. So anyways, I guess we're not going to play the video because none of it's working right. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly know what happened, but there was a bunch of complaints from the, you probably, uh, from the gallery. Yeah, I can't uh, see my, 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 I have to put on my glasses to see and I can't really see We just much, bored so. everyone to tears. Yeah. So. Fuck them. Why, don't give, um, why don't you give the breakdown of what they said? So the breakdown of what they said was that uh, basically that GDP cross to F1 Durbin is cherry pie. I think that's right. Yes. Right. And then F1 Durbin cross to the Florida OG is what they called cookies. Now they were asked to clarify what F1 Durb was. Is it F1 crossed a Durban? Is it whatever? And it was basically not in your bag. Not in your bag was the answer. So that that's where we're at. So basically it was supposed to be the GDP and um and and F1 Derb making cherry pie. What what's your thoughts on that? Um that is uh that is not what I know of. Okay. And that might cause a bunch of so what I think happened realistically is i don't think they wanted anyone to know okay um because i don't think they wanted anyone to like try to recreate what they had and i think it's fair to say that no matter who they might be currently um back then um the guys that that made it famous were more hustlers than they were growers and breeders yeah Right. They were more people that that move things around that like they, they were deeply involved in the weed scene and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they they were more middlemen than they were like someone like you or me. Yeah. Who was producing it, you know, making seeds, you know, growing for market, all that different types of stuff. They just weren't that way. And so I think they were concerned both that they didn't want to give anybody credit. All credit with cookie starts with cookie fam. Yeah. Right. Um, and like a lot of places. Uh, as we as we've talked about many before times on this show, uh, you you know you 
you work off what you get first, right? Yeah. You you get work for other people and you get bag seed or you get this or you get that and then it gets famous and then what happens? You want to make it seem like it all originated from you. Yeah. Right? Um, and I also think that maybe even back then, like, I don't even think they all had their story straight with one another. I doubt that they really even knew what pollinated what. I don't think those guys could truly identify a herm in a room. What was herming on what? And I think they did a lot of guesswork personally. Like, I, they ain't the brightest. Well, I don't think necessarily speaking, it's not the brightest, but imagine... I'll be fair and I'll just say that imagine that like your your story starts with bag seed. Yeah. Right? And now you have to now you have this famous thing and it's blowing up and you know like you're starting to breed and do some different stuff with it because you're trying to market it in a certain way. But like all the steps that got you to where it begins you didn't actually do. Yeah. Right? Like I mean for instance it's pretty well known that Burner was a bud tender. Um, he didn't grow at all. Yeah. Right. He knew rappers and he had a small hip hop career that he was trying to work on. Um, and he was an outlet and he hyped stuff and he moved stuff. Yeah. And he, he made that into like, you know, he's a bit, obviously he's the face of cookie now. Right. Yeah. Um, but he's the, I mean, hype man. yeah, I mean, he's the one on, um, Forbes, you know, the yeah, front he's cover the face everything. Of cookie. He's yeah. the face. And, you know, and that wasn't, I don't even think that was done intentionally. Like it was, it was almost like, I think that as these, there's like a lot of things, you know, there's, there's a loose collection of people. Mm -hmm. Right. And as fame comes and there's no contracts and there's no formal, you know, organization, everybody starts reaching for everything that they can get. Yeah. And there was winners and losers in that. Uh, at least so far, there's some people that are super well-known and there's a few people that were probably like more responsible, at least for the beginning parts that aren't very well known at all. And that seems to me to be a um, a common theme in the history of cookies, whether you're at the beginning or you're making your way down the road to, you know, the, the lemonade era and all that. It sounds like it's, it's a repeating story that there are a lot of really uh, sometimes even really talented people doing some work behind the scenes that um don't get the shine so yeah i mean well I yeah there, there was an there was an era there was an era too where back then especially um it was all about who wanted to show their face yeah there was a couple people that did not want to show their face and so as a result like barely anybody knows who they are and people like burner and you know and jigga and stuff like that who were wanted to be famous and wanted to use this to make themselves famous. Yeah. Um, they became the face of it. Right. One got a rap career and, out of it. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, you know, and and became CEO of cookies or whatever. And, you know, and he wasn't even involved in any of the growing of cookies or any of the breeding or anything like that. He was the guy that got you decent tickets for it and, you know, and gave it to Wiz Khalifa and these different people that would hype it up. And then these famous people had it. And he yep. helped put it on the map, you know? And so when the people that actually own cookies decided to like, you know, form the brand, they got the face of it. They didn't really care necessarily so much about like, you know, who was the most involved or who, who, you know, yeah. they cared about, they needed a spokesperson. Yep. A lot and of major corporations do that. That's, that's yeah. very common. And, yep. You know, and Burner was looking to be famous and, you know, was a good spokesperson. Yeah. Right. And I mean, there was, you know, I used to, I used to joke that like, there used to be a bunch of people in the Bay that thought that the eighth of cookies they were buying was like personally hand watered by burner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I heard that a lot. People would get in big arguments or they'd be like, no, no, he's growing it. Come on. Back in the day, it was real bad. You know, and there was, there, there was, there was, you know, there was definitely crew in the cookie fam that was growing it. Yeah. But that just wasn't his angle. Yeah. You know, they're just, yeah. that just wasn't his angle, you know? So, um, and, uh, you know, and, and so as, as a result of all this fame and stuff like that, there's an, there's another, um, there's another aspect of it where all of them tried to make as much of it as they could as out of, out of it as they could. Yeah, of course. 
right? You know, I mean, it spawned, it didn't just spawn Cookie. I mean, it spawned, although that came later, it spawned Sherbinsky's. Yes. You know, and the Sher brand and all that different types of stuff. And, and gelato and, and all yeah, of Yeah, and, 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 you know, and, you know, so there's like a, there, I mean, this could be like a multiple, multiple, you know, episode show, I suppose, depending on what angle you want to take on it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I will say going back, I do think that part of the, what's the best way to put it? Part of the confusion about cookie is that in the beginning, some of them honestly didn't know all the steps. Yeah. And I, and I do think that they also wanted to obscure a bit what they did know because they didn't want anybody else to either get credit or, you know, go out and grab those things and start making things because as everyone's aware, right. Um, you know, cookie seeds and cookie hybrids and OG KB and then forum and the, and animal and all these different things that were coming out, they mm -hmm. all commanded top dollar. Yeah. So there was a lot of money on the line and they were always terrified of their secret and their control of it getting out. Yep. Because again, it got famous and it got famous at this weird time where things were transitioning, but it was still that 215 gray area time where nobody owned it. Yeah. Right. It was very punk rock. Like nobody, nobody owned it. Nobody, there was no contracts. There was no documentation. There was no, there was a loose group of friends. Yeah. That was only shortly to come. <laughs> right. So there, and there was really wasn't a way. I mean, there was even a thing where like they would, I don't, you know, they wouldn't even let, um, they kept, they kept burner away from the grows. Yeah. You know, and they gave him the clothing company, which ended up being a dumb thing because he made a shit ton of money off selling $150 t-shirts. Yeah, he was the the real winner in that one. You know, um, and and it, and it also didn't have any risk because it wasn't weed. It was just clothing. Yeah. So I wanted to show a picture, too, of the F1 Derb real quick. This is a picture. This is from uh, the Instagram account F1 Durban, but this is exactly what it looks like, how it breeds. Um, it's very true to form on this. A lot of people question whether it's a real cut or not. It does exist. It's existed for a long time. Um, when we grew it, it was heavy Merlot wine. But I'm not so good at smelling like aniseed and these terps. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's probably very easy to to uh, have that in there. I know some people smell Coca-Cola type terps too with that Merlot wine smell. But yeah, this is it. Um, I, I think it's not very well documented, so I wanted to sneak it in here while we we're still talking about the uh, predecessors. Yeah, I, Potential yeah, and, predecessors. And I think it, I think it, it ties into, um, like I said, the multiple accidental pollinations, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that that occurred. Um, and so, the farther back you go in the cookie story, uh, the murkier it becomes. Yeah. Um, there are certain things that, that I think we, we know for sure. There are certain things that are known that aren't very well known. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, there are certain things I might even dance around just because they're stored like, you know, as, as any tale that involves a bunch of friends over a long period of time, you know, there's parts that are pertinent and there's parts that, you know, um, could ruffle some feather feathers, I suppose. But yeah. And there's stuff I, you, that you think, and that I, I probably disagree with. You know, like in, in what's actually in specific ones and specific things. Oh, so I, I mean, it'll be interesting you know, about, uh, you know, we won't say what exactly, but like, you know, there was this week between CSI, Matt and myself, there was debates going back and forth on on lineage of certain things. Yeah. Um, and people that have been skeptics, maybe even coming around to certain theories yeah, or being more open to it because yeah. they, they smelled certain things or saw certain traits and they were like, whoa. You know, and, and to me, like, I, I don't know why I don't. Why would you want to dance around? I think we don't need to dance around it, particularly on this specific one, because I think it answers a lot of questions. There's been a lot of. Is it OK if I just enter in a little bit? I mean, you know, sure, we can, you know, it, like, go for it, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, because we're already going to do the um, the F1 derb reversal at CSIs and we're going to answer a lot of questions with it, at least to, to get an idea of what happens when you cross, say, the F1 Derb and that Florida OG or the Flow Rider. Um, or if you cross F1 Derb and GDP. Um, looking at the F1 Derb, I, I mean, growing it when I did, I didn't I didn't have a lot of insight into it. Uh, I grew it, seeded it immediately, lost it pretty quick. 
Um, and I also didn't have the same experience that I did that I do now looking back when I was growing it. And one of the main question of cookies, I think that, that me, you and um, CSI talk about is where is all the black and purple coming from? I mean, we know Urkel can kick purples and that's in, in my opinion, at least Urkel is the main, main force behind cookies and the look, the shape, a lot of it. Um, but it's not really well known for consistently and, and being a true breeding purple breeder. Um, there's a lot of green coming out of purple or purple Urkel and GDP much the same, but there is a consistent true breeding black trait in that line. And, and, you know, we had talked about deep chunk. We had talked about, um, maybe it is just Urkel. Maybe it's like this recessive trait being brought up and it's been slammed into each other enough that it's just consistently bringing black now. Um, or maybe Mendo perps, you know, and what we know about Mendo perps is it's, it's, it expresses a lot of different uh, smells in the S ones. One of those is heavy anise, you know, and that's always very interesting. And I think uh, the the fact that it breeds true to black in a lot of cases um, is another interesting point to that. What's your thoughts on it? Um, I will admit that uh, this is a little political or whatever, but I will admit that um, I did not believe for a long time uh some of the stuff matt was saying uh in terms of not that i thought it was lying or anything like that i just i you know i just didn't yeah. i just didn't quite see it quite as much and then um you know different stuff starts coming to light in various aspects and you know things start bubbling up or whatever and uh and i i do tend to believe now that uh mendo p is in there somewhere yeah i do um, you know, and it's simply because, you know, there's, there's a lot of connections between like Mendo and our crew, uh, and those Bay area cats in one way or another. Like I said, I mean, I have a long running relationship back then with, uh, w one of the guys, um, mm -hmm. that we did a lot of exchanging of, um, we had a, we had a cut called Anus that used to get pushed through the Bay quite a bit. And it would did go, you, did you say the Anus? The, the anus, anus. <laughs> the anus, um, which was, which was, uh, which was a strangely, which was a Mendo Perps, uh, Durban poison. Yeah. Uh, interesting th thing that we made that Herms. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'll, people should know that with anything like there's certain things that are, that are speculation and there's certain things that I know for fact. Yeah. Right. And so you want to always be clear about the two. Yeah. Um, I, I, I tend to think that it's in there. I tend to think not that it's in, I don't think it got in there late. I think it got in there early. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it was an early contributor. Um, and I do know something that's not particularly well known, uh, that I guess I could spout sure. or whatever. Um, I know what the mother plant that cookies came out of was. What's that? Um, so the seeds that, uh, became thin mint, mm -hmm. right. That I guess started the, the cookie craze or, or what have yeah. you. Right. Um, they were grown by my friend and, uh, uh, they were rolling up a joint in the Bay. Uh, one of my oldest friends was actually in the room with, with, with these guys at the time and some seeds fell out of a cherry kush bud. Okay. Okay. And those seeds, uh, Jigga ended up, uh, making thin mint. So I wonder, so cherry kush, now this is different than the cherry pie, right? Yes. So supposedly, um, cherry kush is um, cherry pie, uh, herms onto the flow rider. Gotcha. Right? And seeds makes from that, they called cherry kush. That makes sense. Cherry pie is known to do that. It'll right? Drop cherry pie, not only herms, uh, cherry pie throws actual male, full male pollen sacks like yeah, you would live like, pollen live li like not just bananas yeah. but actual it can pop full male flowers at times right yes it's a tricky one yeah um and um you know so so i know what the mom is you know yeah i and as a result of that i like i know what room it, it actually was it actually the the room was grown in willets which is a little town in mendocino county about 20 minutes north of me yeah 
Um, and it, it came out of a relatively small room and there was only three things in the room and two of them were, uh, were, uh, cherry pie and, and that, and that Kush cut. Uh, the other one was Elvis. Oh, strange. I remember Elvis. Yeah, yeah. The other one was Elvis. There was, there was only three things in there. Um, and so we know what the mom was. So they were rocking Elvis and they didn't use that. They used all the others. <laughs> well, it's not that they used you're right. You're right. Yeah. It happened on I, there. I think to be honest, I think the first intentional cookie breeding like yeah. by them came when they started messing around with Sherbert, like when they started messing around, you know, in 2009, 2010, 2011, 12, like that era. Yeah. Right. I think before they didn't really know, you know, it, they didn't even have it. Right. Yeah. It was different people that had it. It was getting moved to different people. It's not like certain people weren't smoking it or having it or whatever. But it was like I think Thin Mint was sort of the basis for them to like take off with it. Yeah. If you will. Um, and uh, and so, you know, I wish I could actually see comments uh, while I was I'm talking. There are nah. some people that are dropping some stuff that I want to that I would like to speak on. But. Um, I have to toggle back and forth between uh, Matt's beautiful face and uh, you don't want to do that. You don't want to miss seeing my face. I know. So that's why it's so hard for me to read comments. So I apologize. Sometimes I'll see him if Matt po pops them up because he pins them or something. Yeah, it's um, um, there's a lot of stuff about like always be flowering and flux and uh, frost boss and all those guys. People just plug in names trying to guess at who's who. Mm, I mean, all good names, all good names, I suppose. I, I don't know if. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a part of me that wonders how specific to get on certain things and, sure. and what to stay like slightly mysterious on or whatever. But, um, there was a couple names. There was even a, a, a dude's name that started with a C in there that was definitely involved on a certain level. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know I, I'm, I am 99.9% .9 sure that, uh, what became thin mint came out of cherry, cherry Kush. So one thing I, I want to add here is, um, when it came to the forums, when it came to Girl Scout cookies hitting the forums, a lot of people are used to hearing the term forum cut. Now, when Girl Scout cookies hit the forums, Thin Mint wasn't something being passed around or bandied about. The name really wasn't something popping up yet. Um, the first time we saw it was, I believe it was always be flowering, passing it to someone either directly to Lumpy Lump Status or or to someone to lump status. And that was the first time a lot of people really got a good look, like a really good look at big blown up grows of cookies. And they were some of the most beautiful. And I do believe those are still up there on IC mag. If anybody wants to go check them out, um, lump status has some beautiful pictures up there. But yeah. Um, the forum cut was the one that the cut that became called forum cut was the one that tended to circulate. Um, then mint didn't start circulating until much later wanted to add that in there because a lot of people are asking about uh the forum and when it came well yeah i mean we me and a a, a homie of mine on this show i'll just call tuna uh tuna and i actually grew some of the first cookie um up in mendocino uh because those guys were all stuck in like six and eight and ten lighters or whatever and yeah. they were trying to get uh they were trying to get uh obviously more of it at the time mm -hmm. you know uh, and they were so paranoid about anybody knowing what it was. Uh, I think they made it, I, I think they made us call it, I'd have to ask him, uh, gravity. Oh, interesting. Right? Because, because they didn't want anybody on our scene, any of our workers. They made sure that like, we could never talk to anybody that was on our farm about like, this was special or this was new. They were terrified of it getting out. Yeah. Um, and so, and they were pretty controlling on it for a long time. So I'm not surprised that Thin Mint took a minute to get out. Um, yeah. I think what screwed Cookie in that regard is that uh, in Cookie lines, there's hermaphrodism yeah. and bag seeds get out. And that's in a lot of ways, that's how Cookie kind of spread at first. They were not passing it out to friends. They were not sharing it. They were not, they had a thing that made a lot of money and was hyping and that was their ticket to ride and they didn't want to share it. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I'm not I mean, surprised that I'm not surprised that the real Thin Mint sort of took some time to bubble out. Right. Yeah. Uh, because one of the things that's kind of funny, one of the things that swore me off of cookies for a few years 
was uh, we ran a couple big greenies, a couple big depths of it, uh, and it freaking it hermed mm -hmm. uh, and seeded. And then they were devastated because they didn't want seeded weed to get out. Yeah. Right? So they didn't want us to sell it. So you can imagine how fun it is to have a couple greenhouses of weed that they don't want you to sell. Yeah, um, for sure. And it was kind of, it was kind of before like the, the modern hash era had sort of taken off again. Right. So it wasn't like you could just be like, Oh, we'll just wash it. Mm -hmm. Right. That it really wasn't, it really wasn't that era yet. Right. Um, where there was like a, like a whole bunch of hash, like there was, you know, there was water hash and there was some BHO and there was Keith and stuff, but it wasn't like all the, the modern gear that people are used to. Yeah, um, there wasn't really, like the secret cups blown it up quite yet. I don't think I, there were wasn't they? even like you know bang like you know that was like the if you were smoking it back then you were probably smoking a glowing cherry banger and dropping unpurged BHO into it or something like that. You know, yeah, like, yeah that's it stuff. wasn't it was it was it was the snap crackle and pop era. You know, uh, there there was uh, it was it was we're stuff going that to people death. we're going to hell for the shit we made and sold as BHO early on. Yeah, yeah, well, ignorance, you know, ignorance is, it, it, people didn't know at the time. Yeah. I don't think, you know, people, and we you know, and they, we didn't have a vacuum ovens and all that different types of stuff. It was, uh, um, coffee filter, you know, water bottle, weed in it, shoot fucking. I mean, the worst thing was, 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 you know, uh, this is getting off tangent, but like PVC yeah. tubes was the standard mm, with, uh, yes, with silk was. screen. And then yeah. you would, you know, you would put a cap on it and you would drill a hole through the cap and then you would like pop, um, you know cans of, of butane through Stripping and all that, that. <laughs> and yeah and then and then all of a sudden people discovered that like after you do that for a while the pvc isn't smooth anymore on the inside yeah isn't that weird how that works so yeah. a little polyvinyl chlorate or whatever into your yeah. mix but yeah. that's that i mean that's way off topic but um but i just mean in the sense that like uh i discovered uh pretty early on that cookie did not like food sunlight uh and was prone to hermaphrodism yeah you know and i think all the early cuts that got out were a lot of them were bag seed i would think so you know and then they got and then you know we're talking about form and then they got named i mean we see so, this with diesel like we've talked about this we've seen this with chem dog we've seen it with a bunch of stuff where where just bag seed bag seed bag seed proliferates on cuts that are kind of held tight in little crews bag seeds start slowly prolifer proliferating you know i remember when this was happening with cookies uh the cookies crew kept referring to everything as fortune cookies like you're lucky you got that seed in that bag so it's fortune cookies that's not real cookies they're just fortune cookies that was the slander of all non cookie fam approved cuts well yeah because it was one of those things where they if it wasn't branded through them it wasn't them sure and they they certainly weren't going to admit that their stuff had gotten out either yeah you know, and so there's a bunch of rumors. We don't need it's not like I'm some expert where I can tell you the origins of forum exactly or sure. OGKB and how it exactly popped up and through where and how. I mean, there's a there's a lot of, you know, like a lot of these things, there's a lot of circles involved, you know, yeah. small circles that can overlap at times, you know, and there was definitely circles in Mendo that had aspects going on with them. And those, you know, and there was circles in the Bay. Yeah. And, and in some cases, some of those people own places in both places, the Bay and by my area. Yeah. You know? Um, and so as a result of that, you know, I don't think, I don't know if, if most people ever heard of like what bud itself, the, the thin mint was found in, because I don't think they wanted to give up what the mom was. Yeah. You know? Um, but I'm night, like I said, I'm 99% sure that it came out of it came out of cher of cherry kush what's you funny know? yeah it makes sense and what's funny to me is like it's almost like that old dutch way of thinking where neville would put his the lineage out because he was a breeder and he knew it would be even if you know what the parents are unless you had these exact clones you're still going to have a tough time making a line that represents the same exact line that I'm selling seeds of, you know, sure. but a lot of these other people, they didn't, they weren't as deep into breeding. So they're thinking, if you know my recipe, you can make my, my recipe, you can make my food, you know? And well, yeah, um, if, if you know what, cut, if you know what cut the mom was, you can get that cut and then you're yeah. halfway there. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. And you've then got and the you've got the magic. mom. Yep. Yeah. And, you know? and in all reality, even if you grab two of the, 
uh, same cuts and reverse them. If you're popping seeds, the likelihood you're going to run into that same exact expression in your environment is very low. But that's, so, you know, that was years yeah. away from them figuring that shit out. So, I, you know, I know what Buddy came out of. I know what strains were in the room. Do I know if if it if that those seeds were from an S one of that of that plant? No. Mm -hmm. Do I know if it was the the Kush hermed onto that plant? No. Mm -hmm. You know. Do I know if the Elvis was involved? I don't think it was, but no. You know. But I know it's those three, and I know what 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 bud it came out of. Yeah. You know, and I don't think, and I don't even think amongst the, their initial crew um they spread it out very much like uh a jigga didn't even tell the person it came from for over a year that he had found it <laughs> but that's how it Beyond. goes right yeah. that's how it goes yeah he didn't it, I, I think it took so there's always been there's always been uh uh intentional opaque yeah. you know intent intentional you know uh fog if you will you know yeah. uh i mean so looking at cookies from a, a just a purely and when i talk about cookies i'm going to talk about not necessarily the the thin mint because i don't think most people like i know it's out there people have it yes you know but most people experience the forum uh in general so when i want to talk about cookies most people when they think of cookies think of the forum cut and when we look at that from a breeding aspect what i tend to see in it is purple urkel and OG Kush. And the reason that I tend to see this is because out of doing myself, having made several different OG Kush and purple Urkel hybrids and OG Kush GDP, having run a bunch. And what I had seen was this constant right around the cookies expression showing up these small yielding cushy looking purple things, you know, slightly mm -hmm. gassy, sometimes more grape. Honestly, a lot of times when I'd see something that looked more close to cookies, it would be more grapey. But finding one that looked like that with gas was really, really unique. Um, but to me, for a long time, that's what I thought the recipe was. That was it. That's all you ever needed. Um, but I do think, I do think Mendo Perps comes into play heavily. You know. Um, well, I mean, if I if I had to make like a, a an un like a, an educated guess, I suppose, mm -hmm. of what maybe happened is. You know, I think that, you know, it's almost like parallel lines that come back together. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have a situation where maybe maybe you've got something like um, uh, maybe you've got something like F1 Derb. Yeah. OK, whatever they say that is. And that thing herms on to that thing herms on to uh, uh, Kush. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's a plant. And then, you know, you've got F1 Derb and that Herms on to GDP or, or something close to that, right? Or Urkel. And, yeah. and you've got Cherry Pie, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then that thing Herms on to, uh, that thing Herms on to Kush again, right? Mm -hmm. And now you've got Cherry Kush. Yeah. And then something Herms again and puts seeds in Cherry Kush. And now you've got Cherry Pie. And now you've got possible thin mint. You know what else you have? Phenotypes, 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 phenotypes. You got some phenotypes, homie. Yeah, I I, uh, I mangle the English language, so I have a hard time specifically on nailing Jigga on that one so bad. But <laughs> um, you know, but I, I think that I think that all those cats were determined to be famous. Yeah, and they saw their movie. And they took with it. And then all these questions that come out and people want to be like, okay, so have you been in your basement for the last 15 years making this? Yeah. And they certainly didn't want to be like, well, we stumbled upon it at the very end. And we were yeah. getting different things from different friends and friends were growing it and we were moving weed and this was happening and that was happening. And then I got the seed, seeded bud. Yeah. And so I'm, we're cookie fam. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a nice way to end that statement right Voila. and boom yeah. here we go you know and so so i mean I don't, i'm just even trying to be fair to them like sure. their mission was to like build you know they, they had an idea that they could build a brand and they could get famous and they could you know sell a lot of weed for, especially it, probably in the beginning it was wow if we control this we can get crazy dollar at all these clubs on the top shelf yeah so let's produce as much of it as we can right 
and get top dollar everywhere. Yeah. I think that's really how it started. And then the branding aspect came along and IG and this came along and, and these different things started happening and they started to realize that maybe there was maybe with the way things were heading and legalization and all that, like maybe they could become famous. Yeah. Maybe they could become rich off it, you know? Um, and you know, so obviously like burner and Jigga are well known. Uh, Sherb is pretty well known. Um, you know, but there's a couple other people, uh, that aren't very well known that probably had more to do with it than anything, at least in the beginning. Yeah. Right. Um, but they didn't want their faces to be shown. Um, maybe because they were Bay Area hustlers at the time. Yeah. And they didn't want, they didn't, you know, and, and you know, I've, I've said this before on, on the cast too. It's like, it's a very different skill set from the 90s through the 2000s um, <clears throat> of staying under underground and staying with your face not visible and staying safe and then flipping into, I'm going to create a cult of personality. I'm going to be famous. Everyone's going to know my face associated with weed. Yeah, that was a big transition. And it turns out that the people that wanted to stay uh, secret aren't very well known. And the people that wanted to stick their face over everything and talk and be at all the events are, are household names in the weed community. Yeah. However you want to say that, you know, but I mean, that's how it goes in any business, not just weed. It's any like the the, the front man's always going to be the one that that gets the shine it just is what it is i mean you know it's but it's it's different in weed because i think uh you know there's a part of it where there was risk involved yeah and and you know when i and when i say hustler it's like that you know they there was a lot of gray area then yeah so you know people were in, intently not trying to get in trouble yeah. You know, and so some people took that route and some people took the fame route. And, you know, I think when they started, you know, they started trying to breed with it, like basically based off the fact that they had this one cut and now they were famous. Yeah. And some people took the route where they tell on the black market people at local business meetings. Um, so we haven't gotten to gelato or sunset sherbet yet. Do you want to touch on those? We can touch on the sherb, I suppose. Well, I mean, I, th I think, um, yeah, we'll start with Sherb. Let's start with Sherb. I mean, that so, happened first, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yep. Um, so so Sh Sherb supposedly um, by the, I, I didn't get to ask Sherbinsky himself what Sherb, what Sunset Sherbet is. He said it was made in his garage during sunsets, I believe. Um, no, it was, uh, it was made, uh, the district in San Francisco that he lived in is called the sunset district. Oh, maybe that's what he meant by sunset. Yeah. Because that was my bad. It's that. called, if, if you live there and you're from the Bay, you do, you tell people I live in the sunset. Okay. And that makes know, more sense. It's just, it's like a neighborhood, you know, that like would be I why. Live, yeah. That's, that's exactly why. So okay. it's, it's named after the neighborhood. So I've seen a few different things. I've seen, um, Burmese Kush cross to the flow, right? OG. Um, I seen pink panties cross. To, oh, I'm sorry. It was pink panties cross cross the floor at OG. But I've seen different things for pink panties on what exactly pink panties is. Whether it's really Burmese Kush cross to flow right OG or it's a Burmese Kush cross to something else. You, I don't, I don't remember. Have you run that one yet or not? The the, the pink, pink panties. Yeah. Burmese Kush. What do you? Which one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. The pink panties, which is supposed to be. Um, a Burmese Kush cross of some sort. I, 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 it's, it's, it's in the stock, but it has not made its way into the bloom. Yeah. It's, it's not. I remember when I first got it, I was really stoked just to kind of get a good idea of what it looked like. And it reminded me a lot of a, um, a lower resin blackberry Kush. Ooh. Yeah. That's not, that, that does not sound. It had better terps. It had better terps than blackberry kush. So it's not like a total knock on it. I, I see why someone would have used it for, for the terps, but it it wasn't super resinous. Um didn't have great bud structure. It wasn't super dense. It was pretty, it was purple, and it had a great pink stock, like pink striped stock with purple stripes down. It was really pretty that way in veg. Um, but I believe that's what's supposed to be half of sunset sherb, if I'm correct. Um 
And the other half, I don't remember. Does anybody else remember? Do you remember? Yeah, I mean, it. I, I, I think you know. I mean, I think they've acknowledged that it's like. I think it's. They, they say it's that cross to thin mint. That's why. That's right. Thin mint and pink yeah. panties. Yeah. Because it's all. Because it's like they cookies never, never really varied very far from the uh from the the root yeah. you know uh they 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 didn't i mean that's part of the issue too is it's it's not really they had like a family or a line they had a, they started with a couple of cuts yeah you know um i mean like even like gelato right gelato is is you know sherbert back to thin mint yes right i believe so he said uh made right reversing sherbert hitting the gsc and and he said that originally they were trying to reverse thin mint onto sherb, but that failed. So sherb onto thin mint worked. So they, they said they tried it two different ways. Did he say if he re, did he say he reversed sherbert or did he say yes. they had a sherbert? Ma yes, he said reversed sherbert. Yes, reversed sherbert. Yeah. intentional reversal of sherbert in um some in in you know like in a typical la garage blowing it up type thing like i've always done no, i was done like i said it was it was i i mean i believe them in the sense in in the sense that uh uh sherbinsky had a six lighter in the in the um in the sunset district mm -hmm. right and jiga and various people they were they were looking for places to do breeding okay they were looking for places to like okay so they have this cookies thing Right. There's a bunch of demand. They're getting a bunch of loot from selling it all over to these dispensaries and everything else. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to take it in different places and start creating seeds because seeds was starting to be booming business. Right. Yeah. And so they worked out a deal. I don't exactly know what it was where they brought in Sherb and they brought all the cuts over there and they start and they used his um, his garage for a few times. Yeah. And because it happened at his house. Um, all of a sudden he's Sherbinsky. You know, I will say he was, he was the he was the one person out of everyone because I hit up everyone for this show to see if they wanted to leave any comments or if they'd respond about different genetics. He was the only one that was nice enough to respond and and oh, I'm not cared about him. No, no, I just wanted to That's say that... it for everyone watching. He was the only one out of those dudes that was nice enough to respond. So take that for what it is. I I, I appreciated that part. You know, but I do, I, you know, I think he had, I mean, I think even on like his Instagram stories or whatever, he's like gone to the, the sunset district and like pointed out the house that it started. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You know, type of thing. He, you know, he had a six, he had a six, maybe a six or an eight lighter or something like that in the sunset. Yeah. Um, and you know, and he, he was buddies with those guys. And so they, you know, they started doing some breeding work over there. Yeah. Right. So obviously they have a collab or a partnership going or whatever else. And out of that collab and partnership eventually came uh, Sherbert, uh, which they named Sunset Sherbert because of the region of San Francisco it came out of. So it has another Bay tie-in, right? I always uh, wondered that. Now it makes way more sense with the Sunset. Yeah, because you're, you're not from here. You're not. You're yeah. you're from down in 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 California desert hell. Yeah. Um, but Little. yeah, yeah. The sun the Sunset is the Sunset is a beautiful district, uh, beautiful neighborhood um, in the in San Francisco. Um, and it was, I, I don't want to say it was affordable then, but it was one of the, it was one of the neighborhoods that you could actually kind of like live in and get away with something like that for a bit. Yeah. Like there's yeah. some really wealthy neighborhoods in SF and there's some really crappy ones. That yeah. one was like a decent one, you know, and it borders the, you know, it goes all the way to the ocean and stuff like that. Um, and so it's a cool spot. And, uh, they, um, you know, there's so, yeah, again, I think much like the second wave in Amsterdam, like, um, like serious seeds and Luke from paradise and those guys, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, where like even 25, 30 years later, they still don't want to give you lineage hints, you know? Yeah. I don't think Strabinsky or Jiga or any of those guys really wants to give out exactly what the secret sauce is. Okay. Because I don't think it benefits them. Like they, they're not like they're, they don't take that aspect. They take the much more modern aspect of hide how you did it to some degree. Right. Because they don't want anyone out there making reproductions. Yeah. Or trying yeah. to find the plants that they used. Um, and so, you know, and, and, and as, as, as a result of that, obviously, like the rename game is strong. Which is pervasive throughout cannabis. 
So sure that thing is. that you, I never saw a Burmese Kush. Yeah. You know, um, not that that doesn't mean it doesn't exist or anything like that, but no, just, it was, a, it was an Adam Dunn thing that was real popular for a while. Has anyone, has yeah, any oh, of yeah. your friends, you've, yeah. you've seen it? Yeah. B Buku. Yeah. It's popular. Buku. Yeah. It's popular. Yeah. It was you real know? popular during that time, especially in Colorado and, and stuff like that. But yeah, it was one of the early OG Kush crosses that, that people could get like MK Ultra and Burmese Kush. So that's why people were running it, I think. That's why people were running it back then? Yeah, yeah, because it was one of the few you could get that supposedly had OG Kush in it. OG Kush in it, yeah. I mean, as far as I know, I could be wrong. I do think that the the, the primary Kush and all these cookie things is that is that OG, is that flow, that flow cut, because that's the seems one that they had. Sense. That yeah, was their house cut. Sense. And they had it years before, you know, they had it years before the, the whole cookie thing even started. It was kind of yeah. like their thing, you know? Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. So, um, and I've heard, you know, I don't know if I want to even speak, you know, maybe um, it would be, it would be best if it came from sure. Probably. I've definitely heard some different things over the years as to like what could have been involved in Sherbert. Mm -hmm. um, I've even heard that Sherbert in the beginning was a regular line. Interesting. Yeah. We need to have that more. There was, see. That there was, that there was, that there was male Sherberts. Male Sherberts, you know? huh? male there was there was maybe some male sherbs at first and i do yeah. think so if you reserve, reverse some things maybe they picked like an exceptional female yeah and chose to take that one to back to the thin mint again yeah you know when they when they wanted to make gelato or whatever but um i think he's probably more famous for gelato now than he is for sure sure yeah i would think even so. though Gelato's his name is everywhere. sherbinsky i think the yeah. gelato is kind of like we're a wave and, you know, there was probably half a dozen Finos um, from, you know, that, that they made popular. Yeah. From kind of like one batch of seed, right? Yeah. 45, 41, 42, 33, you know. I think, oh, here, here we go. I when think, you plant here, seeds, you number mm -hmm. seed one through 300 or one through 20, hear it. one through I'll 80. Well, we did about, I think only like Scratch 15. It. Didn't mm -hmm. work. No, it worked. Oh, well. Did it? Did I, like, yeah, I was hearing it. I couldn't hear it this time. Oh, my strains, God. Uh, I was 15 seeds on this phenol hunt, and the number 20 was just popping. When you uh, plant seeds... At the end, the 20 was just popping. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if that... I think that was related to, like, Blanco or something later on. But, yeah, that's always a, a good quote to bring Yeah, up. I mean, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't think... You know, I don't think Burner has ever grown. Yeah, I doubt it. I... I remember some of the, the early days at the Cookie Collective when they started popping those up and people would take pictures of like the plants in the windows that because they put like display clones in the windows and they'd just be mm -hmm. covered in PM. And it's like, dude, if, if this dude was a grower, he should be able to spot that. I mean, I get his bud tenders weren't, you know, but dude, if you ever been in a I, room, you know, I, and I, and I don't mean this to be like a, a, a diss at all on Burner specifically. I, I just, I, I mean, you, I, I just mean in the sense that, well, cause I'm not going to diss somebody that doesn't grow. Yeah. You know, I like, do that pretends. Yeah, sure. But you know, I, I don't think, I don't even know <laughs> burner, you know, I think, I think burner is out there to be a hype man. Burner's yeah. out there to promote a brand and he's done a really, he's, he certainly is, you know, uh, promoted it well. Yes, he has. It's but well he's, known. He is good it's, at that. There's not too many corners of the weed world that don't know about cookies. Yeah. I mean, what they know about cookies might vary. That's very right? true. Yeah. But, but the fact, but you know, they, uh, um, and you know, and right now they're trying to be like a multi-state organization or whatever. And, um, and they're trying to be a clothing brand and a weed store brand. And I think like the cookies brand is, is far moved beyond what our interest is. is. Oh yeah. Uh, for sure. Which is the genet. I don't think, you know, they, they're, um, you know, uh, our interest is mostly on this show is obviously genetics, plant makeup, how plants breed, how plants smoke, um, all that type of stuff. I will say personally, uh, we're, we're halfway through the show or whatever, but um, I am not that big a fan of cookie and, and cookie genetics, yeah. to be honest. I mean, we've been talking about it for a while or whatever, but um, if I had a jar of a bunch of famous things, you know, um cookies is not what i would be reaching for very often no um, yeah if i had a jar of 
15 things cookies would not be in the top 15 of things i've smoked nothing cookies there there's been cool unique stuff i've been able to do with it that i kind of like like the 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 uh the cookie berry diesel that ended up being the the blue cookies cut i loved that one um but it's few and far between where i'm like wow this is good enough to really say it's super super unique and, and worth carrying on when it comes to cookie stuff uh, yeah, I mean, I, and that's just like, that's just my personal opinion, really. Like it's, it's yeah. not like, but I just find that like, I really like weed that burns well. Uh, a lot of cookies is like too, too, to me, it's too dense to like burn that great. Yeah. Um, and I think that in the looks, I think that cookies suffered from people making mistakes, not knowing what they were doing early on. And I think they lost the high. Yeah, um, I mean, one of the reasons I think OGKB became so famous, even though it's like a mutant grows like an inch a month, you know, it's a huge pain mm -hmm. in the ass, but it actually worked. Yeah, it was one of the few cookies lines, you know, as far as like cookies goes, I think the ones that actually get you stoned are maybe like OGKB and, and real animal cookies. Yeah, yeah, that's what I you would know, agree. but I think that's the real cool. animal cookies gets its buzz from the kush. Yeah, it, it's it's mostly OG Kush, anyways. It's mostly it's it's like mostly OG Kush with like some, you know, some other elements to it or whatever. And uh, um, but I think a lot to me, a lot of cookie plants and a lot of cookie hybrids and a lot of sherb and all that, um, the high isn't particularly unique or potent, um, and it doesn't last that long. I don't know. I what, got. I don't know what. I, huh? I got something for you. How? Sure. I want you to create a line i want you to create a line that's truly unique in your mind but you have to use cookies you want to make the ultimate special unique cookies line you have anything at your disposal in the clone world what are you going to choose um well if you're trying to make something unique off cookies um, when I look at plants, uh, I, I look at, there's very few plants to me that have it all. Yeah. Right. Uh, that in, in that regard, and what I mean by that in terms of like, you know, every, every good trait you can think of from structure to bud size, to resin content, to buzz, to flavor, to it doesn't mold, to it doesn't herm. There's all these classifications, right? Yeah. And so when you're breeding, you're kind of like, well, I'm going to look at what do I like about this plant and what is it missing? Yeah. Right. And, and so maybe, so with cookies, I'd look at cookies and I'd be like, well, it grows like shit. Uh, it doesn't like food or sunlight. Um, and it doesn't get me that high. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but it has a bunch of cool smells. It certainly has a bunch of cool hues of purple and different types of stuff that can pop out in it. It's bud structure is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would try to breed it with something that would give it, um, from a production standpoint, although this wouldn't be very necessary as far as a smoker goes, but from a, like a grower's perspective, you would probably want to breed it with something that would give it some stretch and some vigor. Yeah. Right. Where it could handle a little bit more food and handle a little bit, um, more light. Uh, and, but from a, from a consumption perspective, I would be looking to cross it with the most potent thing I could think of mm -hmm. uh, that wouldn't fuck up its overall structure. Okay. Right. Um, you know where you're going. So, See where you're going. So, well, you know, in, in the sense of like, I wouldn't necessarily like cross it like with a Neville's haze. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, although I suppose that could work, but like it, it, it would, it would probably mess up the, the qualities that cookie has. Right. Mm hmm. Um, so I'd be looking for something that like packed a rare punch, like, um, like the, uh, if you wanted to stay cushy, you could do that 56 day headband. You yeah. could throw it on some, you could throw it on some chem D, um, which is, you know, which is, which is pretty and super potent, but I would be looking to inject potency in it. It's chem D like the GMO. That's a good, good direction that we've seen. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, chem D, I mean, that's, that's obviously chem D by cookie, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, we at least a Chem D expression by cookies. I don't know if they had Chem D in Spain. Whatever, whatever the case may be. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, uh, you know, that's that's kind of what you're looking for, right? You're looking to add some potency to it. 
Yeah. Right. And obviously, like if that is the case and they did use G, uh, Chem D or a derivative of it, uh, GMO got pretty famous. Yeah, it did. <clears throat> I mean, it even got famous in the sense it did something that I think is super rare, <clears throat> which is it got famous as a cut that takes 12 weeks. Yeah, it did. Yeah, and, that is rare. And in my opinion, anything in the 12 to 16 week range is really, really hard to get famous because it's longer running than most people want to go. Yeah. You know, and I think people were willing to run GMO for that long because it dumped the, it yielded like crazy. And especially when it came to hash yields and washing and stuff like that, it dumped really high. Yeah. <clears throat> so it made those extra three or four weeks really valuable. Um, but I would be looking to add potency to cookie personally. And then as a secondary measure, I would try to make it not grow like shit. <laughs> That's a good measure. I mean, you know, growing in Mendo, um, you know, uh, it, it kind of hates the sun. Yeah. I wish, I swear to God, in the gorilla days, I wish I had Cookie then. Cookie would have done amazing in like manzanita patches <clears throat> and on the edge of forests. Yeah. Yeah. I could see it that. would have really done good because it's dense. It doesn't, it, it does well in low light conditions, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I, I knew people early on in cookie days that would grow one strain directly underneath the light and cookie all the way around it on the edges. Oh, wow. And they would get really big yields per light off that way. Interesting. Because they'd get a decent yield off like the bright parts. And yeah. then the other aspects that were a little like shaded or whatever that were on the outskirts, the cookie yielded just fine. If people are taking shots with aspect today, they're going to die. Um, <laughs> uh, so I was thinking... Because I, I remember seeing uh, Tom Hill's haze cross to the deep chunk that he did. And it actually ended up looking like cookies. So that haze of his cross to cookies might actually be really interesting and keep a lot of the beautiful form that cookies has. While, I don't know, only he would really know after, after doing a bunch of crosses with it, if you could keep some of the high from that haze in there. I mean, I'm a huge haze head. Don't get me wrong. The reason why yeah. I eliminated it mm -hmm. is because it adds this jungle element. It does. And yeah. <clears throat> you could probably find something that you really liked, but you'd better be willing to look. Yeah, that's the thing with haze, right? You have to dig. You have to look. And so that's a more complicated subject in terms mm -hmm. of, uh, but yeah, in terms of, in terms of haze, you're looking for things that make the bud nicer, uh, make it shorter, make it take not as long, yeah. but still keep some of those buzz elements that you're after. The only other thing yeah. I would probably go after would be Appalachia, just because I, I still think that's probably one of the fastest, best uh, lines out there right now for hybridizing. I think that would be, I don't know if it would necessarily go super unique necessarily though. Um, that is so funny, dude. There is this thing. I've been looking in the comments and I was mm -hmm. like, I should hit up this guy, Jay Cash, and ask him to message me. Mm -hmm. And it's fucking Tom. You didn't know that the whole time? No. I yeah. didn't know that the whole time. Yeah. yeah it's, I didn't it's know that dingus. the whole time. <laughs> but that that that's pretty funny. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, I I uh um I I I think I think uh a haze by cookie would be super cool. So, I someone just, think just it... said deep chunk by cookies. Didn't I do that? I think I did that. I think I did that. And it was it just a, a it molded, like just a horrible mold machine. Yeah. I mean, yeah. whether it's from something like Chem D or a headband or a haze, mm -hmm. depending on what kind of buzz you're after, you know, I yeah. wouldn't do Kush specifically. I would go Chems just because there's so much Kush already. It would just that inbreed been, and that, that has been bred into it or whatever. I think you'd be better off going for a different potent indica uh, family, you know, yeah. um, because inbreeding is hard. And that's kind of what screwed cookie a bit is, is inbreeding, yeah. you know, and not going far enough outside. Uh, and certainly Hayes would add a wild new bunch of genetics that they've never messed with. Yeah. Um, but you oh, yeah. really, what you're searching for is that invisible high. I forgot that that Phil Tia Rojo did some of those crosses. He did like a, a Bubba Haze. I think he did a Cookies Haze. He did an OG Haze. A few different ones that were really cool. Someone just mentioned that in the comments. Yeah, I mean, so 
I I think I don't I I would I would cross it to some kind of chem and, and see where it went you know and I did um, like the chem 91 animal cookies that I ran that was pretty exceptional it was um it reminded me of a chem 91 without the shitty uh trait of eating itself but it it looked just like chem 91 but a lot more red yeah too. I think our, nice. our our homie CSI is as expert certainly with the forum cut and stuff like that has done has certainly made some of those hybrids. Yeah. Um, and he's been pretty excited about some of them. Uh, Chem 91 mi mixed with cookie is hilarious because it's got all the buzz you could ever want. And it's one of the uglier things out there. Mm -hmm. um, so you're mixing it with something that's like really pretty and doesn't have the buzz. Yeah. So you're sort of definitely hoping for the looks from the cookie and the wallop from the Chem 91. Um, but it's probably in there. Yeah. Um, and the only reason why I suggested chems <clears throat> or something like that is just to keep the whole thing, the, the structure manageable. Yeah, definitely. Keep it super you know? uncanny like manageable, manageable, I'm trying to get to the manageable. The there we go. I get distracted by comments. Yes, you do. It's okay. That's why we keep uh, you away from them. Uh, but I look, but I mean, it's, I, uh, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, we, we might have, you know, that'll probably be a different episode or something like that. But amongst the crew, you know, we have some, some of the interesting pieces of this, you know? Yeah. Um, I thought this and, was an interesting uh, one too. Huh. Just uh, also along the lines of like the Appalachia cookies would be like a C99 cookies. And I don't remember, I'm sure someone's made that, but I, off the top of my head, I can't remember who would have made that. And that, that, I mean, I don't think it would give you anything super unique with C99 cookies. Just like, you know, but it is. I mean, Appalachia I could give it. you like a much better structure. Oh, yeah. Appalachia could kill it because you got the Chem D in it. So we already know what Chem D and cookies do. And uh, with green crack. Yeah, I mean, that, that actually might be a good one because you'd have you'd have structure and potency if you could find the right mix. Exactly. Exactly. And really good yields. It could definitely increase the yields. I, uh, and I, I take down some I of love, the density. I love haze. Uh, sorry, Mister Soul, but uh, C ninety nine is not on my bucket list of uh, of hazes to keep. I, I get why people like C ninety nine with haze myself, but it is. I don't. I know? get it, but I don't. He just I bred away from all the good parts of it. Yeah, it's he it's, went for chunky just, and quick. I get so much skunk one high from C99 that I just don't like it. I associate it with skunk one much more than haze because of that. Um, I, I get why people for, would. I think he bred for looks, quickness, and weight. Who? Who? Soul? Or yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, it would be Sly. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I think they. I think they had a few seeds and popped them and gave out the cuts. I don't think they bred for shit. I think you don't Sly believe any out. you don't believe any of the cubing bullshit or anything like that. Well, I mean, if if their uh, if their goal was to cube to make a line an inbred, I mean, line, I hate even using the uniform. term because it's so wrong. But you know, yeah, yeah. But I mean, if their goal was to make a seed line that's uniform, then they epically failed. They epically failed because C ninety nine is just shitloads of phenos. So yeah, I mean. I don't know. I mean, like I, I, I have more faith that Sly could have done good breeding work as opposed to Soul, who was learning to breed in or to grow and get grow tents in Colorado in uh, to, late 2010, 11. So, yeah, I don't know. That That's just my personal opinion. I had a lot of insight into seeing that. And I was one of those people who um, absolutely believed word for word that Soul knew a shit until I met him. And then I realized, oh, my God where's sly who's this guy how'd he fucking get pushed out of the equation that's just my thing uh, i mean i you know that's a different subject too but it is true that mm -hmm. uh in the forums um there was a number of people that got pretty famous and it was sort of the first time that weed people could get a little famous in that way yeah right um and you knew what you knew about them through what their persona you most most yes. of these people didn't you didn't know them in real life yeah so you know names like vic high or or tom hill or or uh you know sly or you know dj short or whatever you yeah. know these people are like producing seeds and making offerings and people are growing their stuff out and some of them got super famous right but you don't know them in real life 
And yeah, so I mean, I didn't like... even know Tom Hill was my dad. I found that out later in life. It's super weird. Well, Don't start you know, rumors, people. Papa was a Rolling Stone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Papa was a Rolling Stone. Papa was a Rolling Stone. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, and, and so it's like on forums, especially IG is the same way. It's like you only know what <clears throat> I mean, you only know what people present themselves as. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, sure. when you start to do a show like we do, um, people get, you know, dozens of hours of you chatting. So maybe they can form a slightly like more nuanced opinion. Yeah. But, you know, posts forum posts and IG posts and all that, that can be heavily curated around right. an image or around yeah. a, 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 you know, a phantom even, you know, yep. uh, there's lots of things that you don't see. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think, uh, I think a lot of people make very, I mean, I, I guess that's what, even what I did is I was getting on the forums. I made very, um, I made a lot of assumptions about people based on how I saw them interacting and what they were presenting. And, sure. and luckily, you know, during the time when I, when I was first starting, there weren't a lot of seed makers. So I got to meet a lot of them in person. And that's when I realized how much was smoke and mirrors. And even when I talk to people about me and stuff in my life and what I present, everything is what I want to show. You know, nobody wants to show you the dude you know, having trouble taking a shit because he didn't eat enough fiber. You know, nobody wants to see that part. Um, it's all I, curated I to a I degree. I don't want to see that either. Yeah, I kidding. actually FaceTime not so while well. I'm doing like, oh yeah. my God. So, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's true. It's, it's, um, you know, there are some people that will stun you uh, with the, the level of knowledge that they have about the plant and about breeding when you meet them. Mm -hmm. And there are people that will stun you into oh my god right this is like yeah. the forest gump of weed yeah <laughs> you oh, know yeah this isn't that your nickname just, <laughs> this person just yeah that's, that just stumbled around and bumped into a bunch of cool shit along the way but he was totally you know yeah he was completely oblivious and half aware the whole time you know yeah um that's me you know uh just stumbling stumbling blindly around into one thing or another and see, I kind of felt like that's how I did, though. Like, I, I don't feel like I had any right to be in the crew that I was with in San Diego or have access to the the cuts that I did early on. Looking back, I'm like, you know, a lot of people spend years, you know, trying to hunt down pure push and stuff. And that was just there, you know, or, or hog's breath. That was just there. Um, a lot, I think that's what a lot of this is. It's just knocking around, stumbling around and hoping you don't constantly run into someone who's going to screw you. That's what cannabis yeah, is to me. Yeah, I mean... And to be fair to everyone, I will say that while Matt and I have, you know, we, there's plenty of stories over and over and over again about how bag seed rules the game and how people accidents happen and become yeah. very famous. I'm having a hard time thinking of someone who just simply said, oh my God, I got hella lucky. Yeah, I partied all weekend. My room hermed. I got a few seeds. I popped them. <laughs> Holy shit, it was there. Got super famous. I didn't even breed before that. I was pissed off when it when it when it got seeded because I was worried that it was going to affect my price point. And it's the most famous thing I've ever done in my life. And it was a total accident. And, and uh, you know, one person I can think of, but he changed the story later on to be a much like, capulator. I will say capulator. He came out first and I'm not even a fucking breeder. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. This thing's good. Eh, you know, with the Mac. And uh, after that, the story changed. You know, as yeah, far as like, I went rage for three days and my light timer went off the wrong way. And I, I came back and passed out from the concert and took me two yeah. days to check on my room. And then, you know, and, and, and I'm so all the accidents that have happened or whatever, uh, you know, basically it's like after you get famous people start trying to add intention and care and that they were some reclusive garage green genius yeah. carefully mixing these things together until they finally got a product to show the world. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's not typically how it works. Uh, typically when you do that, you fail. Um, and, uh, you, you know, and, and it was a bunch of work for nothing. Yeah. Um, not that you might not make good work. Uh, that's not what I'm saying, but yeah. Um, getting famous is weird I yeah, mean, getting famous and, you know, having a strain take off is, 
uh, it's not something that you really totally control. No, I, 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 I rarely, I mean, I, I don't think that people really capture lightning in a bottle twice unless they're already rich. You know, if you're already rich and you can put on a good marketing campaign, you can push yourself to a good spot. We've seen that with Rare Dankness and several other companies as they started. Brand new company, big ads in high times, bam, they're at the top, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it is really hard to, to push hype on a cannabis community pre-Instagram. It was very, yeah, I mean, very and even do. if you push hype, unless it's something that catches the public's flavor and eye anyway, yeah. hype, you know, that's why we see so many strains that get hyped and for six months or a year or 16 months or something, they catch a good ticket. And then the community's like, eh, yep. Eh, I don't know about that one. And it's like, how many of, how many of the things in the last three or four years that have been hyped since things went legal do you think are still going to be hype weed 10 years from now? Yeah. Or have a resurgence. There's yep. a lot of them that, that got hyped and they got a marketing machine turned on. And then it, you know, and I mean, take, it's like, uh, it's hard enough in weed to have a one. It's like music, right? You can diss one hit wonders all you want. Yeah. But most musicians never even get that far. Yeah. That's to very have true. One, to have one big hit. Yeah. Right. That like everybody knows the song, most musicians don't get that. That's rare, you know. Yeah. And then it's and then most big bands and most acts, maybe they stay together four to seven years. Yeah, it's the rare ones that are together 15, 20, 25, 30 and stay relevant throughout that time. Those are like unicorns. Yeah, because I mean, way. even in marriages, it's hard to put up with someone for a set amount of years and be live that close to them and have that many disagreements and not kill each other. So yeah, bands, well, there's I watched it. Yeah, it's crazy. But then there's but then there's also staying in the public eye and the public still liking the new things that you're doing after time. Yeah. And so and so if you want to apply that to to weed or whatever, um you know, like let's let's stay in cookie and this isn't meant to be a diss to him by any means, so don't take it that way, but you know, what has Sherbinsky done since Sherb and Gelato? And when Ice did those things parlors. And when did those things come out? Yeah. You know, it's been over 10 years, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, a lot of what Jiga and, and those guys made um, with cookies, it turns out that they didn't even actually make it, right? Yeah. They've had, they they basically have taken under their brand various house breeders at different times. Yeah. I don't know who they all are, but at one point it was C Junkie. You know, at one point it was freaking, uh, what's his name? Uh, Compound. I love the fact that they hired a breeder who couldn't even fucking grow, which means there were two middlemen between the seed maker and the buyer. That is just, when you hear that, that is just, I love it. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, they've got uh, Kenny Powers, who's actually pretty nice, uh, who's been playing around on a small level for them in the background for a long time and making things for them. Um, but as far as... You know, I mean, you know, what, what, what the last, the most famous thing that Jig has done in the last five or six years is probably like rip everybody off for candy rain because they didn't do a germ test before they sold the seeds. Yeah. And then everybody found out that, you know, basically half of them wouldn't sprout and then a bunch of them were mutants. One of the awesome videos I was going to include was Kenny Powers saying how he's from the streets. So he doesn't enter into any of that genetic shit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that was you my know, favorite they, quote. They, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like cookies is like, you know, they, uh, you see them open in New York or whatever. And it's like, get the band back together again. All the friends are older. They've got gray in their hair now, but it all mm -hmm. kind of, you know, catapulted them into a different world in the last 10 or 15 years than it would have otherwise. Yeah. You know, and, and I think it's the same thing. It's, it's an issue for you and everybody else too. It's like, you talk about it, you talk about it. We have private chats about it where in the nineties, um, you could have seed companies that had the same eight or 10 lines for five, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And Matt will joke with me that if he doesn't come out with something every eight months, people think he retired or died. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I did that six month hiatus off Instagram and literally people were like, yeah, he's done dude. Wiped. Yep. Now uh, who, you know, it doesn't take much to, to fall out of the public eye. Yeah. And then, and then on top of that, right. It's like, so going back to like the, 
the one hit wonder, right? You go see some one hit wonder band at a casino, right? Yeah. And they're still on tour 20 years later. And what do you know they're going to play for sure? That one hit. That one hit. You're going right? to hear it. And yep. so for a lot of these breeders, and this is an issue in, this is an issue in breeding in general, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is not to throw shade, but typically a breeder gets famous for a specific line or a specific cut or whatever it might be. And then they just remix that same cut forever. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. It used to be the standard that, that used to be what it used was. To be the standard, like, the you know, flagship um, cut across to everything. Like NorCal IC Mag or whatever got famous for OGKB. Mm -hmm. And instead of branching off in different directions over time, you know, he's like, you know, as, as far as a few months ago or whatever, he was like, there's more OGKB coming down the pipeline. I like OGKB. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not dissing it. I'm just saying that like, that's typically what happens is you, the thing yeah. you get famous off of, yeah. you start doing variations on that theme forever. I did that with uh, the Clockwork Orange for, for a long time. And it just, it seems like that is what you, like the, the typical seed company yeah. thing you do. Yeah. You I don't mean, like the on. Swamp, the, you know, the Swamp Boys with TK, they've branched out recently and done different things. I was wondering why they didn't do more with the white. Because, I mean, that was like their shit and like the Chrome's blockhead. I always thought that would be cool to bring back. Yeah, they didn't. I mean, but I just, I just mean that like typically look at like Dying Breed with Skittles. You know, yeah. or the Skittles crew. Like, what's the Skittles crew going to do next? Yeah, and is it going to have the same impact? Work as with Skittles? snitches. <laughs> but you know, what's what's what are they going to do next? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and so it's an issue with like all like if breeders are lucky enough that like one line gets hella famous. Yeah, it's risky to just be like, this is totally unknown. I'm going in a totally different direction. This isn't what I'm known for at all. Yeah, but this is where my interest is now. And I made that hit eight years ago and I'm not remixing it anymore. Yep. It's just in the past and you can get it if you want, but this is the direction I'm going in now. Yeah. That doesn't really happen very often in weed. No, I, I you know, and, and I can just comment on this a little bit because when I made that decision with the clockwork, I also had to come to the realization that it can disappear. Like maybe no one will take interest in it after it's gone. Maybe what if it just drops and that's that maybe, you know, but there's also the case of what if someone I don't like runs with it? This is my baby. This is our flagship. What if someone I don't like runs? There's all kinds of things that went through my head at that. And then as a breeder, when you're making that decision uh, to, to, to work with something that's not so popular or something that someone else has worked with for years that you can still get, that is a big decision to make. It's hard to break away from, from what sells. Knowingly. Those are all the cuts that I like, the not so popular ones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, but I mean, and that's the thing, though, is that what's funny is that if you are a non-commercial breeder, right, yeah. you have total freedom to do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Because you can, because you're just making it for you and your friends. Yeah. But if you're a commercial breeder and you get into all that and you get into all the packaging and you get into like... I mean, now it's kind of ending the gray area because everybody has to be fully legal and, and, and regulated. But like that whole era where you're buying a booth, you know, and you're doing all this different stuff and all that, like there's a lot of expense that goes into it. Yeah. You know, and so a lot of people breeding just want to hit. They just want to get on base. They want a good hit. They want a good they want a next. This is my next release. Right. Yeah. And so you look at a lot of people's breeding stock and you're like, oh, that's the three things you're basing everything on. Yeah. And then what if you're in your thirties and you want to still do, be doing it in your fifties and sixties, you're just going to have 20 or 30 years off the same basic shit. The smartest thing that, that anyone's ever told me as it relates to cannabis and being a, a seed company was from CSI. And he said, never tie yourself to one clone. Never, ever tie yourself to one clone. He said the second you do that, the second you're locked into one clone and if someone else gets that, you're no longer important. And if you tied yourself to one clone, you can't, you can't create new, you know, I thought yeah. that was brilliant. But there's also a thing of like, were you a breeder and something happened along the way that you got famous while you were already a breeder? Mm -hmm. Like say, take something like, I don't know, you know, star dog. Yeah. Right. Like JJ was, you know, top dog was already a breeder, Yeah, you know, and making a bunch of crosses when star dog got famous. Yeah. 
right? But take something like uh, like Skittles, or like a lot of breeders, they get they start breeding when they have a famous cut, yeah, that other people can't get access to, yeah. And so what happens when your whole breeding career is based upon access? I mean, I remember, you know, I can't remember, you know, it was 10 years ago now, eight years ago or something when Skittles was first hitting the scene mm -hmm. and we would go to Emerald Cup and there would be a line waiting to buy, you know, 10 seeds for three to $500 of Skittles hybrids because nobody mostly could get the five. Cup. Yeah. Mostly five. Yeah. A lot of Red some seeds. of the, the, you know. And, um, and, you know, so some of those guys became breeders at like cookie or Skittles or whatever, when they got a famous cut. Yeah. You know, I mean, NorCal probably became, you know, a breeder when it was like all of a sudden OG KB was the shit and people wanted it real bad. Yeah. And they'll be like, well, I won't give it to you, but I'll give you hybrids. You know, so did you become a breeder to breed or did you get a hold of something famous and you're like, man, I could also make money selling seeds off this shit. Yeah. Because then what do you do next? What's your next album going to look like? That's where it goes. I mean, that's yeah. why you see a lot of these dudes scramble. Right. Sure. You know, and it's like, it's the same thing in music. It's like, how do you stay relevant over 20, 30 years? You have to keep you reinventing know? yourself always. You you look at the, you look at the history of seed breeding uh, who's ever, you know, uh, the next person that does that will be the first. Yeah. Who's, who's really even over a 20 year period, who's stayed relevant. That's a hard one. I would wow. have to say probably, you know, the, the one that I remember, you know, even though I, people always joke at me that I'm is, is Neville. Right. Because <laughs> yes, yes, but, yes. But you can laugh, but it's like, you know, he started in 1985 yeah with all those things and then in probably like in 98 right so mm -hmm. you know what is that 13 years later or something he released mango haze super silver haze and nettles yeah and certainly you know especially counting the super silver haze that had massive impact yeah right but think of somebody think of somebody else that like 15 years after they got famous came up with something that also made them super famous again yeah the hard one you know, most people are retired or busted or, or, you know, over it, you know, and even dealing with the public is the, in that, that long is a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, older breeders that I've tried to come get back out, work with the public again, and they just want nothing to do with it just because it's just not worth it. It's not, they've seen what I've dealt with. They've seen what other people go with. They're like, no, uh, -uh. you know, it's been me so far. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're word. like release something, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's all the stuff you go through and all the things you tell me. It just sounds swell. Yeah, you know, really swell. So we're hitting the almost uh, end of the show. We got to end it before the two hour mark, and we're right about there. Um, I think we've covered a lot of this. Is there anything else you wanted to run into while we still have time? Oh yeah, I guess we do. I guess we are coming close. Um, you know, there was uh, there's obviously a lot more that you could talk about with cookies. Sure. I don't want to say we just scratched the surface, but it's Matt and I do a pretty like free flowing. Uh, wh where does the conversation take us kind of style? Um, there's a lot of like cultural impact that it had. There's a lot more depth in breeding. There's different things that we could have brought up um, because it's one of the big it's, you know, there's a uh, you know, there's a lot to it. Right. Yeah. Some of it we danced around, some of it we avoided. Some of it just isn't our interest. You know, Matt and I's interest is much more the the plant side of things than the than the people that's some you know in, in certain yeah. aspects, right? Um, but you know, there's uh I do think that there's a lot of rumor out there about it. I do think we dropped a few tidbits that I'm pretty confident uh people will find interesting tonight. So that I think that's neat. Um, there is a dude uh there's a dude on, on IG I'll shout out for a second. Sure. Um, uh, his name's Buckshot Hill. Um, mm -hmm. uh, his family's been growing for a long time. Um, and he's trying to hunt through and find some old, like early pearl and different stuff like that, that his family used to grow when he was young. And his great uncle just died this week. Uh, and his great uncle is, a, as he says, I didn't know him, but he said he was an OG grower. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was part of the Kate Wolf festival for a long time, which is a folk festival that the hog farm family throws up at the black Oak ranch in Laytonville in Mendo. 
So he was part of that extended family for a long time. And apparently he's been growing for decades and he just passed away at, at a ripe old age. So uh, condolences to his family. Um, and we are losing a lot of that first gen. Rest you in know? peace, fellow outlaw growers. Yeah, fellow rest outlaw growers, rest in peace, moment of silence. And if you have old people in your family or community that have been growing for a really long time and have stories, try to get those stories from them. Yeah. Because once they're gone, they're gone. And most of our weed history is oral and you never know what little tidbits or different pieces of information that might fit into a puzzle um, are, are sitting in those people's heads. Yeah. You and know? most people don't know that Natso's biggest fascination uh, revolves around oral too, which is, it is. Day. It is a fascination of mine uh, because, you know, uh, um, you know, human writing is a fairly modern invention. Mm -hmm. And for most of human history, all history was oral. Yeah. Right. And weed history, because it was illicit and clandestine and illegal for the most part, uh, wasn't exactly written down. You didn't have a bunch of people getting on camera like we are now and talking about it until recently. So most of the people involved in the 60s, 70s, and 80s <coughs> are still mysterious. Yeah. And they're and they're older now. You know, well, we're gonna be working on some in the next coming up episodes. Um, we've been doing a lot of networking and communicating with people on the back end. So there's a lot of stuff I'm really excited to tell you guys about in the future, but I don't want to jinx it. So yeah, hopefully we'll have some cool new shows coming up soon. Um Definitely go check out the site, right? It's east.com. We have, um, we just did the Appalachia drop, sold out within 20 seconds, literally 20 seconds sold out. We're going to restock those. We have uh, the the um, Santa Cruz wreck, the, the Blue Dream train wreck restock, and um, some smell boat stuff restock. So go check that out. Um, yeah. You want to say anything else before we're done? I'm just always happy that people give us their Friday night and their time. Uh, whether they're watching it live or whether they watch it on replay, uh, you know, anybody that fellow nerds out with strain history, uh, plant history and, and our weird little niche. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks everyone. That's a chuck -a -gunk, gunk, dude. Perfect script from and, up north. Uh, Cut upon it. Your generous, generous time you share with us on these uh, long Fridays. So cheers, everyone. Have a great night. Gonk, 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 dude. Perfect script from up north, dude. Cut upon it.